Hi guys, welcome back to Flora Fun and Food. My name is Lauren and today is actually Valentine's Day and I am doing a Cricut project to make my very own Valentine's Day box that looks like a cute little succulent planter. Let me show you how I did it. Okay, so I found my card box from my wedding and it just has a slit on top that you can drop the cards into. So we're gonna use that instead of a shoe box, but a shoe box would work just fine. You just have to cut the, the hole in the top. So we're gonna repurpose this and get another use out of it. Then I'm gonna use this bulletin board paper that I've had in my classroom for forever. I bought it at Mardell a long time ago. Um, and it just kind of looks like shiplap. So we're gonna wrap this box kind of like we would a present with wrapping paper. All right, um, this bulletin board paper is not double-sided. So I'm gonna roll some out here and I want the, the stripes of the wood to go horizontally across the box. So let's do the box first. Set the lid aside. So in order to make the stripes the way I want them, I'm gonna have to lay it on its side. I'm gonna use my scissors and my tape as weights here. And then we're just gonna make sure we have enough to go all the way around. And we'll just cut across. And now I'm just gonna cut along the top just to get rid of the excess here. And we'll save this extra piece here for the lid. So now I'm gonna take this side and tape it to the box itself like that. And then I'm gonna turn it around and do the same on the other side. And a trick my mom taught me, uh, my mom worked at Hallmark for like 35 years, is if you have a rough edge that you've cut your uh, wrapping paper on, just fold it over about an inch and crease it. And now you have a really pretty straight edge. So that way, when we wrap it over top, we have a straight edge and not a janky kind of cut edge. So I'm gonna do my best to line these up with the lines that are already here. And once I have it pretty well lined up, it doesn't need to be perfect, this will be the back. I'm gonna tape it in a couple different spots. Now I have quite a bit of extra on the bottom. I probably should have taken care of that, but we'll just do it now, it's no biggie. So I'm gonna try and do this to where you can see it. So I'm gonna take one side and pull it straight down so that the edge of my box is nice and crisp. And I'm gonna flatten it against the bottom of the box. I am gonna add a piece of tape so that it doesn't go anywhere. I can't really see what I'm doing. Then I'm gonna push the inner corner all the way to the bottom. And this will let me give a nice crease to my side. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this edge. So pulling it straight down. Taping it where I want it. And then going all the way to the corner, nice and flush and making a crease. There we go. Now we're gonna fold each of these corners in flat against the bottom. and fold that side. I'm gonna give it a piece of tape too, just because this is kind of not very cooperative paper. Same thing on this side, we're gonna fold in to the bottom, crease it, add a little piece of tape. Now, we're gonna take this corner, or this point that we've made, we're gonna fold it in on itself, to make a nice flat edge. And we're gonna fold this tab up and tape it just like that. So 
So fold up, crease, and tape. Okay, there we go. There's the bottom. It looks all nice and pretty. So for the top, I'm gonna make a slit on each corner. This way it will fold a little easier for us like that. So now I'm just gonna fold the side down. and tape it to the inside of the box. And the last side, fold down and tape. So that is nice and secure. We have a gorgeous box and now we need to do the lid. So I need to lay my top lengthwise like this. I'm gonna leave about an inch on either side of the lid. We'll turn it this way and cut the excess off. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna hide the edges. So now what I'm gonna do in order to make this fold easier is I'm gonna cut the corners off like that. So that way, when I fold it, you won't have extra on the corner that gets in your way. So again, I'm just gonna take this down. We'll just do a single piece for now until we get everything kind of situated. I wanna make sure this is lined up how I want it. And then we're just gonna keep folding edges over. There we go. Now I'm gonna secure each corner with a little more tape. There we go. Now we need to make a cut for the slot. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and just make a slit straight down the middle. that. And I'm going to grab the edge, add a piece of tape, and just pull it over like that to secure it. And then same on the other side. I'm going to do one on the ends. All right, now we have our lid ready to go. Perfect. Now it's time to do decorations for the top. So what we need to do first is find a template for our succulent. So I'm gonna type in 3D succulent template into Google and then go to images. And this one right here looks good. It's got a bunch of different varieties of them. And we'll just have to kind of edit it how we want it. So I'm gonna save this to my desktop. Then in Cricut, I'm gonna create a new project. I'm gonna go to upload, and then I'm gonna click on upload image and drag my picture over. I'm gonna keep this simple, continue, and then I need to piece these apart um, and really they all look like the same shape they're just different sizes so I'm going to focus in on one at a time and just save them so I'm going to go down here to my eraser tool and just erase everything but this big green one I always like to preview in case I miss a little spot see I missed a spot right here so I can see it very easily um, and then I'm going to zoom in because on the preview, I can see that those cuts are gonna get kind of mangled. So I'm gonna make my eraser really, really tiny. It's 
it's not gonna look perfect, but they're gonna be small enough you won't notice. So we're gonna hit apply and continue. We're going to save it as a cut image and I'm gonna call this succulent one and upload it. Then I'm gonna upload the same image again, simple. And now I'm gonna erase everything. So erase the background first, which erases these flowery ones, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna erase everything but this larger green propeller looking one. We'll keep this as succulent two. And back again, simple. Erase the background. Erase everything but the peach colored one. And we'll save this as succulent three as a cut image. Okay, and now we're gonna see what we can do with this light colored one. We're gonna click complex so it keeps that lighter shade and see if I can. Yep, there we go. Okay, so now it erased everything in the background, but it didn't erase our kind of daisy looking petals. So let's erase everything else. There we go. And we'll call this one succulent four. All right, now that I have my four succulent shapes, we're gonna select them all and add them to our canvas. And let's separate them so we can actually see what we're working with. That went a little too far. All right, I'm gonna make these different colors so when I print, they will go on different mats. I'm just picking random colors here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the dark green one and I'm gonna keep these small because they're going on top of this card box. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna make the biggest petal layer, so the bottom layer at three inches. Then I'm gonna copy and paste it and I'm gonna shift this down by half an inch. So 2.5 inches for this one. Copy paste again, we'll go to two inches and then copy paste again, 1.5 inches and then one more time down to one inch width. There's those. So again, I'm just gonna repeat this. So I want my biggest one to be three inches on all of these. And we'll just layer them up. Okay, now that I have all of my shapes and sizes sorted out, we're gonna click make. And I have a lot of room on top of my box. So I think I'm gonna make mm, probably four of each. So I'm gonna make four cop, not 14, four copies. Apply that. And when you make your shapes different colors, it will sort it by matte for you. So that's why I have four different matte colors here. So that'll make it easy. Um, now it's time to get our mats ready and cut our succulents out. Okay, so now it's time to get our paper ready. And I like to buy these scrapbook kind of paper booklets from Michaels. Um, and they have really pretty double-sided scrapbook paper and it's heavy card stock. So let's pick out some colors here. I really like this bright kind of teal. I also like this purple and I've got this kind of seafoam green colors in here. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Let's do seafoam green. Actually, you know what? I think I like this darker seafoam better. So we'll stick this one back in so it doesn't get messed up. And I feel like I need a pink or a red or something. I like this hot pink here at the end. There we go. All right, it's time to decide what we're doing. So the first one on my cut mat are the propeller looking ones. And I want those in this kind of seafoam green. So I'm gonna line this up to my grid.
Now my mats have gotten a lot of use and so they're not as sticky anymore. So I like to use some masking tape just to secure it and make sure it's not gonna fold up on itself. And then I waste paper. So right on the edge, I stick a piece of tape and then down at the bottom, I'll do the same. The side should be fine since I'm taping the top and bottom. There we go, and I just fold the edges over carefully so it still runs through the machine. All right, we'll get this loaded and connect our machine. We're gonna select heavy cardstock as our material. And then I'll hit the Cricut button and it's gonna start going. And while it's cutting, I'm gonna get the other color on the next mat. Okay, we're gonna release that and get our next mat loaded. And hit the Cricut. And now let's unload this mat and start assembling. So now is kind of the tedious part of just weeding out all the shapes from our mat. Okay, while my Cricut keeps cutting, I'm gonna start assembling some of these. So I'm gonna start with the propeller one. And so what I like to do to make these look more 3D is to fold the pedals inward like that. Then we're gonna take the neck size, fold inward, and we're gonna put a little dab of hot glue right in the middle of our base, our big one. Ooh, that was a big dab. And then we're gonna place this next size opposite of what we started with. So it's kind of got like petals in each window of the previous petals, if that makes sense. Okay, we're gonna get our next size, fold in. Hot glue. and opposite. And we just kind of repeat this process. If you get hot glue on the edges, it's okay. It'll dry and you can pull it right off. And the final tiny piece just needs a tiny dot of glue. Add it to the middle. Now, once this is glued, you can kind of fluff up the layers how you want them so they're a little more 3D. I like to do kind of like a bud, like a flower bud, kind of pull them all to the middle, kind of pinch the bottom, make a few of them a little wonkier than the others. And then it just looks like a 3D succulent. Look how cute that is. All right, let's do this darker teal one, which is kind of the classic succulent shape in my opinion. And I'm literally gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take the biggest one for our base. We're gonna fold each petal inward. And that'll be our starting layer. Then we take the next size. Now this one is gonna be a little, um, different so this one has a really chunky petal right here i don't want to line it up to where to where the chunky petals are near each other so i'm going to do like opposite sides just so it doesn't get kind of lopsided so paying attention to where my chunky petal is here and here i'm going to kind of layer it in between petals like this so a dab of hot glue on the back We'll add that right to the middle and repeat. Now I'm going to do the chunky petal kind of on the, like turn it 90 degrees. So on the side that we haven't had a chunky petal on yet. So 
chunky petal this way, like that, and then 90 degrees again, just to make sure that it doesn't look too asymmetrical. final one we'll just kind of put where it looks good and I like to kind of bundle up the middle one because it's kind of like the the center of the succulent and we'll stick it right in the middle there let it kind of dry and then we'll just kind of fluff up a few of the petals and there we have our next one. Look how cute that is. Okay, let's do the kind of daisy shaped purple one. So again, just folding the petals in on themselves and then just layering it up, kind of petal between petal here. And then our final middle piece. Ah, oh, so cute. All right, last but not least, let's do this pink one. Now, these petals are not gonna fold quite the same because they're really kind of a shallow cut, but we still wanna give it some texture. So I am gonna fold these in just to give it some depth like that. And again, placing it kind of in the window of the previous layer. And in with the final layer. Ah, this one's a little more flat, but it's so cute. All right, I'll be back once I have finished all four of each color and then we'll add them to our box. All right, I have all the succulents ready to go, so now it's time to glue them to the card box. All right, so I want to kind of cover the top of this so it kind of looks like a planter. So I'm just going to start kind of placing things where I think they would look cute. Try not to get too many too close together. There, I think that looks pretty cute and symmetrical, so I'm just going to start gluing. So I'm going to put a nice big dollop on the back and press it down. I'm so happy how this turned out. I am definitely a plant person and we're doing a teacher Valentine's box. Um, you know how the kids always, you know, used to do it or still do it. So we wanted the teachers to have a chance to do it and I'm really excited to participate. So this one's very much a Lauren creation. I think everyone's gonna know it's mine, but I'm really happy how it looks. Just keep on going. We're gonna let it kind of overhang the sides a little bit. And now I'm just kind of fluffing everything how I want it. Ah, oh, it's so cute. Look at that. I love this. Um, I may end up putting my name on the front, um, but I haven't quite decided yet. So if I do, I'll probably just Sharpie it on there. All right, I ended up making my name in a holographic vinyl. So now it's officially done. So here is the finished product. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and head over to my channel to subscribe for more content like this. And I hope to see you again very soon. Thanks guys, bye.